Any questions? Juwan, both teams combined uh, 36% from the field, less than 23. From deep, is that great defense, bad offense, or just lousy shooting? I would say great defense uh, on both sides. Uh, I know we were competing hard and scrapping, uh, doing our best to try to lim limit them to one shot opportunities by keeping them off the offensive glass. You know, Michigan State does a great job of sending three or four guys to the offensive glass. And, uh, you know, our guys were so dialed in to keep trying to keep them in front, keep them out of the paint, same time contesting shots, and like I said earlier, but Juwan, this was kind of a typical Michigan Michigan State war, wasn't it? I would say it was a typical rivalry game where both teams were battling, trying to win the game. Uh, fortunate enough for them, they play on their home floor, their home fans. Uh, it's a great atmosphere, uh, extremely competitive game. Uh, gotta love it. Rico, coach, you uh, you, your team cut it from double digits to single digits late in the game. What was said in the huddle? Well, uh, second half, you know, second half adjustments, uh, also getting back to who we are as a team. Uh, first half, you know, with foul trouble to Jed, Dougie, uh, and it was early too. Uh, you know, we had some different lineups in there that some some never played together. But you know, I, I love how you know, defensively, like we discussed and talked about, you know, guys were trying to keep keep it in. Keep the guys in front, try to keep AJ out the paint, which is tough to do. Uh, try to keep them off the glass, which is you know, challenging, but it says, so it says a lot about our level of competitiveness. Uh, second half, uh, we made a run. Uh, we started attacking the paint. We didn't settle for you know, a lot of these uh, threes and jumpers and things like that, putting pressure on the basket. Uh, then, you know, unfortunately for us on the other end, uh, AJ got in the paint, made that tough uh, runner. Also, uh, I think they got an offensive rebound. And, you know, those are the things that hurt you because that's what they're great at. Tell me. Yeah, Juwan, I want to go back to, to the end of that first half with uh, Doug sitting almost last 10, Jet almost the last eight. Of course, Jalen uh, injured. Did this feel like maybe the first time not having the, the full guard depth or just the way that played out really sort of caught up? Well, um, you know, we got to do it by committee. And we will. You know, that's how you know, basketball goes sometimes. Doesn't go as all the way down as you plan it. And, uh, you know, as coaches, uh, we got to figure it out. As players, they got to figure it out on the floor. Uh, the belief and trust in that locker room and also on their rosters, you know, real. Whoever goes in the game, uh, we know that it's going to be next man up mentality. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's tough when you have your primarily ball handlers on the floor. Of, I'm sorry, on the bench in foul trouble. And then you also have one of your top scorers who's also one of your secondary ball handlers. Um, but, you know, we figured it out. We're not going to make excuses. Keep, keep rolling. Jack. Juwan, you mentioned the home fans. How much do you think the environment played a role uh, today? Uh, I'm not sure. You know, you add Coach Izzo, probably help them. Uh, but you got to really enjoy it. I'm sure our guys, they loved it, you know, being on the road and playing in a beautiful environment like this. Competitors do step up to to the uh, competition. Andrew, do you think your guys did settle maybe in the first half then for too many outside shots? Well, uh, when you look at the stats, you say, okay, well, one for nine from three. It's easy to point that out, but you know some of the shots that we took was open, uh, just didn't fall. Chris, I wonder if uh, first what that first half, what were they doing on Hunter to kind of bottle him a little bit in the second half? What changes do you feel like both you and him made to, to get him more active and, and get him maybe a little bit farther down on the block? Well, uh, when you have Dougie and Jet, you know, some of the decision makers that are out there on the floor, and you know, it's easy to get hungry in spots that's going to be effective. Brendan? I guess on Hunter's touches and things like that, you know, when, when you're facing teams that might change your defenses or give you different defensive looks, and you have young guards out there needing to identify in real time. What kind of challenge is that? You know, man, it's great to get uh, guys get their feet wet and uh, get the chance to compete out here in Breslin because this is one of the best environments you can play in uh, college basketball. So guys <coughs> like Isaiah uh, came in and gave us a big lift in the first half. Uh, 
Case, you know, he's, he's been through it before. He has the experience. Kobe had to play the point guard position, logged a lot of minutes in the first half. Um, but, you know, it's, it's going to be that way sometimes. Fred? Juan, several decades ago, I'm sure Tom was chasing you around recruiting you. What is your relationship like these days? Uh, if I recall, he didn't recruit me. I don't, I don't recall that. He did? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I don't school. But our relationship today, uh, I feel we have a very good competitive relationship. Um, I have a ton of respect for him and what he's done with this program, all the successful years that he's had consistently, which is hard. Uh, won a national championship, ton of Big Ten titles. Uh, you know, his, his resume, his experience speaks for itself. Learned from a great coach, and Judd Ecoff, who I actually played, he coached against me. At, I came here and played. Uh, so uh, that's all I can say. <laughs> Chris? You, you had mentioned AJ and, and trying to keep him out of the paint. He had a couple jumpers today and, and played under control. I guess what do you what did you see maybe different from him a year ago on tape and then tonight? Well, uh, a year is a big difference for any ball player because you know the AJ that I'm familiar with kid is a worker. He's all about, you know, the growth mindset and improving every year. And you can just see his growth from last year to this year. His confidence level, uh, the relationship with he and his coach is strong. And, um, he also is a guy who's going to be the primary decision maker, has the ball in his hands pretty much 80% uh, you know, of the time. So that confidence level definitely uh, give you the comfort level that you need. Uh, but he's also a smart guard. He's competitive, you know, at the end of shot clock, and knowing that he's going to be the guy who has the ball in his hands and you know try to break his man down and make a play. He's been very successful while doing it. Coach, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks.